Welcome to Stories with Grandma Joan. I'm so glad you came. Today we're going to read part two of chapter four of Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's Farm. It's called The Freddy Cat Cure. Remember last time Jeremy brought home a big black dog? I'll read a little bit from part one and then we'll go on with part two. <clears throat> Mrs. Jackstraw said, shake hands, Friendly, and Friendly immediately handed her a huge black paw. She sh shook his paw and he smiled at her. She said, he's a lovely dog, Jeremy. Are you sure the people left him? We're sure all right, said Sarah, coming in from the kitchen with hot coffee. The Humane Society man stopped by yesterday and told me all about it. I suggested that we keep him for a while, and he was real glad to give him to us. Nobody seems to know what his name is, so me and Jeremy named him Friendly. Georgie said, he's part mine too, isn't he, Jeremy? He's part all of ours, Jeremy said. He's our family dog, and I'm going to build him a dog house. That's a fine idea, said Mrs. Jackstraw. Daddy, will you help when, he, Daddy will help when he comes home. Just then, Phoebe came into the dining room to tell her mother that she had definitely decided that she would rather stay home with from Imogene's party than to take the bus. She got as far as mother. I have definitely decided when she saw Friendly. Giving a shriek, she jumped up on a chair and yelled, Take him out of here! Take that monster out of here! <coughs> <coughs> That's our new dog, Phoebe dear, said Mrs. Jackstraw. His name is Friendly. Shake hands with Phoebe, Friendly. Friendly walked solemnly over to Phoebe and held out his paw. She crouched back under, back against a chair and squealed, Take him away! He's dangerous! He'll bite me! Oh gosh, what a dope, said Jeremy. Come here, friendly old boy. Stay with me and don't go near that big frady cat. Mother! Phoebe wailed. Are you going to do anything? Are you going to let that vicious monster stay here? Of course I am, said her mother and you are being a silly little girl. Now get down off the chair and go upstairs and tidy your room. Get that dog out of here first, please, shrieked Phoebe. Oh, Mom, said Jeremy, she's just awful. Come on, friendly old boy, let's go outside. When Friendly and the three little boys had gone outside and closed the door, <clears throat> Phoebe got down off the dining room chair, went upstairs and locked herself in her room. She wouldn't come out for lunch. She wouldn't even come out for supper. All she did was snuffle and cry and say, I'll never come out of my room as long as you have that dog. Mrs. Jackstraw talked to her. Mr. Jackstraw talked to her. Sarah talked to her, but it did no good. Finally, Mrs. Jackstraw called her friend, Mrs. Melancholy. She said, honestly, Bets, I'm at my wit's end. Phoebe is afraid of everything. She's afraid of mice, bugs, dogs, cats, buses, swings, the dark, the light, the water, and the mountains. Just everything. Was Shirley ever like that? Not Shirley, but Kathy, said Mrs. Melancholy. Kathy was even afraid of dolls. She said they might come to life and hurt her. She, <clears throat> she was also afraid that her, of her bed because she was afraid she might never wake up. But since I sent her to Mrs. Pigglewiggle, she's been just fine. Last week, she won the diving medal at the YWCA. Why don't you call Mrs. Pigglewiggle? I will, said Mrs. Jackstraw, right now. I don't know why I didn't, didn't think of her lo a long time ago. Thanks ever so much, Bets, and tell Kathy I'm awfully proud of her and would love to see her medal. And so, said Mrs. Pigglewiggle, to all her animals that evening after she had finished milking, you can see that Phoebe is a very timid child, and I shall depend on you all to be as gentle and tame as possible while she is here. That includes you too, Fanny, she said, leaning over the trough and poking her with the corn cob. So wake up and listen. Oh, hum, said Fanny, heaving to her feet and sending three of her little piglets flying into the corner where they landed in a squealing heap. I mean it, said Mrs. Pigglewiggle. If I hear so much as one growl out of you, Fanny, I'll put you on a diet of sawdust and hot water. Sticking out her lower lip and closing her eyes sulkily, 
Fanny began sniffing around in her trough, hoping for her for a few forgotten crumbs or curds of milk. All she got was a sliver in her snout and a bite on her leg from Armour, who was one of the piglets who had knocked she had knocked into the corner. Feeling very sorry for herself and muttering about boars visiting children, how boring visiting children were, she settled down again and went to sleep. Pigs love to sleep. Mrs. Pigglewiggle checked the latch on her pen. Then she, Lightfoot and Wag, started up to the house. They were just under the willow tree when Penelope, with a terrible scream, came hurtling down right on top of them. Here's a picture of that. <clears throat> Mrs. Pigglewiggle was so frightened she dropped the basket of eggs and broke five of them. Wag was so scared he snapped at Lightfoot and Lightfoot was so surprised she scratched Mrs. Pigglewiggle. Ho, ho, ho! Scared you that time, didn't I? said Penelope laughing. You certainly did, said Mrs. Pigglewiggle, and I don't find it very funny. Especially since I broke five eggs. Chickens will lay more, said Penelope. Dumb old chickens can't do anything but lay eggs. Cackle, cackle, cackle. And lay more eggs, and that's all chickens are good for. Dumb old chickens can't even talk. And that's a blessing, said Mrs. Pigglewiggle crossly. Now, Penelope, I'm having Phoebe Jackstraw out to visit for a while. She's a very timid child, and while she's here, I do want you to play I do not want you to play any of your scary tricks. I don't want any of that scaring that you did tonight. <clears throat> I don't want you to scream like a chicken hawk or hoot like a Pulitzer or scream like an eagle. I want you to help Phoebe get over her fraidy catness. I don't know why they call it fraidy cat, Penelope said. I don't have much use for cats, but they're certainly not afraid. I don't know where that expression originated, Mrs. Pigglewiggle said, but it has been in use for a long time. Now let's hurry and get supper. Phoebe will be here early tomorrow, and I want everything nice and tidy when she comes. Phoebe was at her worst the next morning. She was afraid to have her mother drive. She was afraid her daddy didn't know the way. She was afraid she had forgotten something. She was afraid Mrs. Pigglewiggle didn't really want her. When they drove up to the front of the farmhouse, Wag was lying quietly on the porch. Lightfoot was curled up on the swing, and Penelope was in her cage eating sunflower seeds. But Phoebe wouldn't get out of the car. I'm afraid, she wailed to her daddy. Look at all those vicious animals. They'll bite me. I know they will bite me. Oh, what a ninny, said Penelope softly to Wag. She wouldn't even be fun to scare. She'd probably have a fit or faint dead away. Please, Phoebe dear, Mr. Jack Straw said, pleading. If you are afraid of the animals, Daddy will carry you. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle said, nobody is going to carry a ten-year-old girl into my house. Phoebe, get, get right out of the car and don't forget your suitcase. All right, said P Phoebe meekly. Now, said Mrs. Pigwiggle to Mr. Jackstraw, you can run along, Mr. Jackstraw. Phoebe will be just fine. But, Fe but Phoebe threw her arms around her daddy's neck and shrieked, Don't leave me, daddy, don't leave me, I'm afraid. Mrs. Piggle went over and whispered to Penelope. Penelope jumped down to the railing of the porch and said, Phoebe Jackstraw, you stop that nonsense right this minute. Phoebe turned around and saw the green parrot and said, <coughs> Oh, Daddy, look, a parrot, and she can talk. Why don't you shriek and be afraid of me, said Penelope. I don't know, said Phoebe. Maybe it's because you can talk. Well, it's a relief to know that there is something you're not afraid of, said Penelope, even if it has to be me. What in the world ever made you such a ninny girl? I don't know, said Phoebe. I'm just afraid of everything. Well, said Penelope, then you'd better live in a cage like I do. Nothing can get in and you can't get out and you're safe. Everything the same every day. No new experiences, no excitement. You might as well be dead. How did you get out of your cage? asked Phoebe. Mrs. Pigglewiggle bought me. Penelope said. The minute she got me out of the pet shop, Mrs. Pigglewiggle opened the cage door and I rode home on her shoulder. Now, 
There is a woman with some sense, said Penelope. Well, let's not stand here talking all day. Say goodbye to your daddy. He's got to go to work. Goodbye, daddy, said Phoebe, as calm as a dish of jello. Goodbye, chickabitty, said her daddy, relieved and surprised. Call me when you're ready to come home. I'll call, said Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Now, said Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, when the car had gone, let's go up and put your clothes away. I've given you the small guest room that's right next to my bedroom. Phoebe's, Phoebe's bedroom was very cozy with a sloping ceiling, a high four-poster bed that had a little ladder to climb into it, and a window that looked right into the walnut tree. Oh, what a darling room, said Phoebe, looking around quickly to see where the light was. There wasn't any. On the bedside table, though, was a candle. Do you use candles, she asked. Oh, yes, dear, said Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. Candles and kerosene lamps. When things get better and I sell my apples and walnuts, I might buy a light, a light plant. Candles have awfully funny shadows, said Phoebe, like witches and goblins. Not like witches and goblins, said Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, like bunnies and fairies and elves. I can make very good shadow pictures. I'll show you how tonight. Now, while you put away your clothes, I'm going down the, in the cellar and get some apples. I thought we'd have applesauce and gingerbread for dessert. Phoebe carefully laid her clean underclothes and socks and t-shirts in the drawers of the bureau. Then she took her Sunday dress and her coat and started to, toward the chest. The closet was large and it was dark. It was under the eaves. Phoebe opened the door and peeked in. Taylor and Filbert, the gray squirrels who had secret walnut store in the far corner, thinking she was Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, shouted at her, Chicka, 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 chicka. That's what squirrels say. Oh my goodness, squealed Phoebe, slamming the door. Rats, big, gray rats. Wait till I tell Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. Throwing her dress and coat on the bed, she ran downstairs calling, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, come here quickly. There are rats in my closet. There was no answer. The kitchen was empty. <clears throat> Phoebe went out on the back porch. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, she shouted. Still, there was no answer. Oh dear, said Phoebe. She's gone away and left me. What will I do? Penelope said, she has not gone away and left you. I've been here all the time and she hasn't crossed this porch. Well, where is she then, said Phoebe. I've called and called. What were you calling about, asked Penelope. Rats, said Phoebe, sh Phoebe, shuddering. Huge gray rats in my closet. I was afraid to hang up my dress. I'll go up and take a look, said Penelope. Come along. Oh, you go, said Penelope. I'm scared to death of rats. You're scared to death of everything, said Penelope. So come along and show me where you saw the rats. Oh, all right, said Phoebe. Do you want to ride on my shoulder? Heavens, no, said Penelope. I can't abide nervous, jumpy people. I'll walk. When Phoebe opened the closet door, Taylor and Filbert said, Chukka, 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 chukka. Phoebe screamed and Penelope said, You ninny, those are squirrels. Come here, Taylor and Filbert. Come and show yourselves to this silly little girl. Rolling walnuts ahead of them, Taylor and Filbert <coughs> came over into the light of the doorway. Phoebe said, Oh, they are squirrels. Will they bite me? Of course not, said Penelope. Squirrels can't. Aren't carnivorous? Thanks, boys, she said to the squirrels who sat back expectantly. She just wanted to see you. Now, said Phoebe, hang up. Now, she said to Phoebe, hang up your dress and your coat. Trembling a little, Phoebe did so. Taylor and Philip watched her, and as soon as she shut the closet door, they went through her coat pockets, took out two pieces of saltwater taffy, and a stick of double mint gum and hid them under the walnuts. When they got down and Mrs. Piggle Wiggle still wasn't there, Penelope suggested that they go down to the barn and look for her. Are there animals in the barn? Penelope asked fearfully. Naturally, said Penelope. Did you think there'd be Eskimos? Oh, no, but Eskimos are very nice people, said Penelope. Now come on. They walked down to the watering trough. Evelyn and Warren and the goslings and Millard and Martha and the ducklings were swimming around in the pond. 
Of course, the minute he saw Phoebe, Warren began to hiss and scratch his neck and flap his wings, and of course Phoebe screamed and ran back to the house. Oh, Warren, for heaven's sake, Penelope said. That girl's only a visitor and wouldn't harm your goslings for anything in the world. Anyway, have you forgotten about Mrs. Pigglewiggle told us the other night? What, said Warren. What, what, asked Willard and Martha. She told us that this girl Phoebe is very timid and while she is here, we are to all be as gentle as possible. Now get back in the pond and hush up. I'll go up to the house and coax her down here again. So the ducks and the geese got back in the pond and Penelope flew up to the porch and talked Phoebe into coming down to the barn. This time when they went past the watering trough, all the ducks and geese sailed around and around smiling at Phoebe and making little riffles in the water. In the barn, there was a great deal of stamping and snorting from Trotsky's stall. Oh, heavens, what is that dreadful noise, said Phoebe, clutching at the ladder to the loft. That is Trotsky the horse, said Penelope, and a gentler, more faithful animal never lived. Let's go in and see him. Oh, no, said Phoebe. Horses are too big. Well, go up in the loft and look down the hay chute to at him, said Penelope. Oh, I couldn't, said Phoebe. I'm afraid of ladders, you know. Then, said Penelope, sighing, come around here to the front of his stall. He can't possibly get out, and you will have his feed box between you. So Phoebe timidly crept around to the front of Trotsky's stall, and Trotsky nodded his head, smiled at her, and put his nose down to be stroked. Instead of stroking his nose, Phoebe jumped as if she had bitten, had been bitten. Get back, get back, she shrieked. Trotsky looked at Penelope in a very bewildered way. Penelope said, You'll have to excuse her, Trotsky. She's more timid than a wild rabbit. Say, how come you're all saddled and bridled? Trotsky shrugged his shoulders. Come on, Phoebe, Penelope said. I'll show you Fanny and the piglets. Clematis and the lambs, Heather and Artibus, the bunnies and the chickens, the turkeys and their poults, and Georgia, Lynette, and Paulette, <clears throat> and their baby chicks. I can tell right now that you won't want to see Pulitzer the Owl or Billy the Bat or Winston the Toad. Fanny was fairly civil to Phoebe, and the piglets were darling. They squealed and played when Penelope pulled up the little door into Lester's pen. Armor and Swift came in and let Pen Phoebe hold them and pat them. Heather was as timid and, timid and sweet-smelling as any little calf and Phoebe hugged her around the neck and scratched her behind the ears. <clears throat> Clematis and the lambs wouldn't come up to the pasture fence, but Phoebe got to see them, and she thought Clematis had let herself so had let herself so t go so terribly, and the lambs were just like toys. Of course, Phoebe was scared to death of Tom and Tomira, and jumped ten feet in the air when Tom gobbled at her as turkeys do. She didn't mind the chicken so much, but her hands were so trembly when she gathered the eggs, she cracked three on the edge of the nest. She liked the bunnies, but she was afraid of the old hens who were taking dust baths in the sunshine by the manure pile. Well, that's just fine, said Penelope when the tour was over. Now we'd better go up and ask Mrs. Pigglewiggle why Trotsky is saddled. It may be that she's going to teach you to ride. Oh, no, please not that, said Pe Phoebe, shivering. I don't want to ride. I wouldn't know how to steer. Even I can steer Trotsky, said Penelope. You just tell him where you want to go, and he goes. And when you get there, he stops. If you want to stop before he does, you say, whoa. Now, isn't that easy? What if I fall off, said Phoebe. Why would you fall off, said Penelope. Anyway, you've got stirrups to put your feet in and the saddle horn to hold on to. Now let's get up to the house. When they got to the house, they still didn't see Mrs. Pigwiggle. She wasn't upstairs. She wasn't in the parlor. She wasn't in the kitchen. Did she tell you where she was going? Asked Penelope. No, said Phoebe. I mean, yes, she did. She said she was going to the cellar to get some apples. Well, maybe we'd better look in the cellar then, said Penelope. The door is outside there under the dining room wall window. 
One of the doors was open, but it was pretty dark down in the cellar, so Penelope sent Phoebe to the kitchen for a candle and some matches. Phoebe said that she was afraid of matches, but Penelope said, Let's have none of that nonsense, girl. Strike a match and be quick about it. I'm worried about Mrs. Piggle So Phoebe struck the match and lit the candle, and she and Penelope went into the cellar. They found Mrs. Piggle in the fruit closet with a barrel of apples on her foot. She was faint with pain, and her voice was just a whisper, and she said, You won't be able to move the apples, Phoebe. Get on tr Trotsky and ride as fast as you can over to Larson's and send Nels back to help move this barrel. Penelope, you go upstairs and call the doctor. Just tell the operator to get him for you. Everybody hurry, please. I'm in great pain. And she closed her eyes. And there's a picture of Mrs. Piggle Wiggle with her foot under the barrel in great pain. <coughs> Penelope jumped on Phoebe's shoulder and said, Come on, girl, run, run as fast as you can run to the barn. So Phoebe ran, and when she got to the barn, Penelope told her to untie Trotsky and lead him to the watering trough. Then she told her to climb up on the watering trough and then get up onto Trotsky's back. Put your feet in the stirrup, she said, and when Phoebe was in the saddle, she said, Pick up the reins. All right, Trotsky, take her over to Larson's as fast as you can. Hang on tight, Phoebe, but don't slow down. At first, Phoebe was so scared she closed her eyes and lay forward in the saddle like a sack of cornmeal. Trotsky didn't gallop, which is very joggly and hard on a new rider, but ran using his right hind foot and left forefoot and his left hind foot and right forefoot together. There was so little motion that the first thing Phoebe knew she was sitting up and holding on to the reins and loving horseback riding. The wind blew in her mouth, the fences streaked by in long lines, and the trees looked like fences. When they were in the Larson's lane, then in their barnyard, and Mr. Larson came running up from the tractor shed, What's the matter? he said. I saw you clear over by the oat field. Who are you? I'm Phoebe Jackstraw, said Phoebe, and Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's hurt. A barrel of apples fell on her foot, and she can't get it off. She wants you quick. Move up, said Nels, vaulting into the saddle behind her. All right, Trotsky, go. He put one strong arm around Phoebe, and Trotsky galloped all the way home. Galloping was like being in a boat in a storm, Phoebe thought. Up and down, slap down hard, up again, then slap down hard. Phoebe loved it, but she was glad Nels held on to her. <clears throat> when they got to the farm, Penelope was waiting on the porch. She said, you certainly made good time. The doctor's on his way. She flew to N Nels' shoulder. The cellar's over there, this way, she said. Phoebe, go in and build the kitchen fire and put some water on to heat. You might make a pot of coffee while you're at it. She and Nels went around the house. Phoebe went into the kitchen. She had never made a pot of water or a fire in her life, and the only stove she had ever seen was her mother's electric stove. She wished Penelope had stayed to help her. She opened the little door in the front of the stove. The firebox was black. No coals even were in there. In the wood box, there was some kindling, a newspaper in the rocking chair. Rumpling up the newspaper, Phoebe stuffed it in the stove and poked in some of the smallest pieces of kindling wood. Then she lit a match. To her amazement, the paper flared up and caught the kindling. When the kindlings began to crackle and burn, Phoebe poked in some big sticks. They soon caught fire and began to burn too. She was so proud she kept opening the little stove door and peering in at her fire. She almost forgot about the water. She lifted the kettle, but it was empty. Carrying it to the back porch, she set it down in front of the pump and fearfully lifted the handle of the pump. There was a loud slurping sound like somebody getting the last drop out of an ice cream soda. With a frightened gasp, Phoebe dropped the pump handle. My goodness, this thing is going to explode, she said to Wag, who was watching her. I think I'd better go down by the pond. Barking, Wag jumped up and down with both paws, pulled down the pump handle. A small stream of water came out of the mouth of the pump into the tea kettle. Is that the way you do it? Phoebe asked. Wag barked, so Phoebe gingerly, carefully lifted up the pump handle again 
and it made the same gurgling noise until she pushed down on it and then a stream of water as big as her thumb came out. She pumped again and more water came out, so she pumped until she had the kettle full. Say, pumping's kind of fun, she said to Wag as she lifted up the full kettle and put it on the stove. Her fire was going well now, but she poked in wood until the firebox was clear full. Penelope came into the kitchen. Did you get the fire going all right, she asked. See, said Phoebe, opening the firebox door. Looks fine, said Penelope. Did you open the draft? What's that, said Phoebe. That little thing on the side, said Penelope. See, those little windows. Well, they should all be opened or closed. I forget which. They're closed now, so I'll open them, said Phoebe. She did, and the fire roared. This is fun, she told Penelope. And I pumped water, too. Wag showed me how. Fine, fine, said Penelope. Now what about the coffee? How do you make that? I don't know, said Phoebe. I don't even know where Mrs. Piggle-Wiggle keeps the coffee. It's in the pantry in a red can, said Penelope. All you do is put some in the coffee pot, pour in some water, put in an eggshell, and let it boil. Fill her up, said Penelope. I'm going to look on the can, said Phoebe. Here it is. It says one tablespoon of coffee for each cup of water. That's easy. When Nels carried Mrs. Piggle Wiggle into the kitchen, a few minutes later, the fire was snapping and the kettle was humming and the coffee pot was on. Nels put Mrs. Piggle Wiggle in the rocker by the stove, and she said, Everything is so cozy, I feel better already. When the doctor came, he said nothing was broken, but he bandaged Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's foot and told her to keep off it for a day or so. Then he and Mrs. Piggle Wiggle and Nels had a cup of coffee and some sugar cookies. When he was ready to leave, he said, You're mighty fortunate to have this fine, brave little girl to help you, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. Poor old Mrs. Finlock was all alone when she hurt her foot last winter, and so of course she had to walk on it too soon, and it took much longer to heal. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle said, I know how lucky I am. Imagine having a visitor who can ride a horseback, make fires, pump water, and cook. Now all I have to worry about is milking. I'll make for milk for you, said Nels. I'll help you, said Phoebe. I already know how to gather eggs. Okay, said Nels, but first I'd better teach you how to unsaddle and feed Trotsky. Before you do either of those things, I'd like to ask a favor, said Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. Would someone please go down to the cellar and get me those apples? I can peel them while I'm resting my foot. I'll go, said Nels. No, let me, said Phoebe, picking up the apple pan and running out the door. Wait, called Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. It's dark down there. You'll need a candle. But Phoebe apparently didn't hear her because she didn't wait. In a minute, she was back in the kitchen with cobwebs in her hair and a big pan of red apples in her arms. Good girl, said Nels. Now let's go down and take care of the animals. When they had gone, Penelope jumped on Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's lap, took a bite of her sugar cookie and a sip of her coffee, coffee and said, You know, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, when Phoebe first came here. I thought she was the worst ninny I had ever seen, and I could hardly wait for her to go home. Now I wish she'd stay all summer. So do I, said Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. And that is the end of chapter four. I'm so glad you came today to listen. Tomorrow we will read chapter five, and it's called The Can't Find, the Can't Find It Cure. And I'll show you a picture from that chapter. There's a picture. Okay. Bye-bye. See you next time.